Hi everyone, and welcome to the Jesuit Institute. Since COVID began in the year 2020 from April, we have consistently tried to record and offer you a Mass, and now in recent times, this encounter with the Word on Sundays. But after considering everything that we need to consider at the Jesuit Institute, our vision and mission, and also knowing that many things are on offer, we have decided that from the beginning of Advent in 2023, we will no longer be putting out this Sunday devotion. Now, I understand for some of you, this may be disappointing. On the other hand, there is so much that is on offer. You've been invited to return to your parishes. I know for some people that may be difficult. But on the internet, there is an abundance of offerings. And so we invite you not to feel abandoned, but perhaps to look and to see what else may be helpful to you and your growth in the Spirit as you continue to journey with the Lord. And so, on the Feast of Christ the King, we will bring these encounters with the Word to an end. I invite you most especially, if you can, to return to your faith community, to be part of your faith community. And if you can't do that, to look for other options that will be helpful to you. I want to also thank you for your support over the years that we have done this. We have had so many encounters with new people because of these weekly broadcasts. So thank you for your support. And please be assured that we at the Jesuit Institute continue to find ways of helping and supporting you in your spiritual life. If you'd like to know more, feel free to go to our website, jesuitinstitute.org. .za. God bless you. Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the Scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Who can find a good wife? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor 
and reaches out her hands to the needy. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Blessed are all who fear the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are, are all who fear, fear the Lord. Lord. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. You will be blessed and prosper. Blessed are all who fear the Lord. Your wife, like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children, like shoots of the olive around your table. Blessed are all who fear the Lord. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper all the days of your life. Blessed are all who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. As to the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a woman with child and there will be no escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers and sisters, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Abide in me and I in you, says the Lord. He who abides in me bears much fruit. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward bringing five talents more saying, Master, you delivered me to me five talents. Here I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two more talents. His master said to him, 
Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward saying, Master, I knew that you are a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not winnow. So I was afraid, and I went away and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I had not sowed, and gather where I had not winnowed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was mine with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have of abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Fear. To fear or not to fear. In the responsorial psalm we prayed, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. That fear that is a positive fear, a sense of the greatness of God. However, in the gospel, we hear that third servant, out of fear, hides the gift entrusted to him. And because he does so, he is severely reprimanded by the master. In this case, fear leads to the servant losing everything. It is obviously something negative. So what does this teach us? A key to understanding Matthew's version of the parable of the talents is to pay careful attention to what is said about the master who represents Jesus himself. During the time of the master's journey, that is, between Jesus' ascension and second coming, he entrusts his servants, us, with his gifts. The master is extravagantly generous in the gifts that he gives. And notice too that he is discerning, for he calibrates, he gives gifts according to the capacities and the ability of each one. He knows each one of us and gives us according to what he knows about us. Notice too that the master gives his servants freedom, encouraging them to use their creativity and industry in making use of the gifts that he has bestowed upon them. And then we move ahead to the end of the narrative, to that time of reckoning. Notice how he takes great delight in his servant's success. And he wants to extend to them, to us, the fullness of life and joy in his presence. So, what is the proper response, our invitation to this loving, generous, and empowering master? The response of each of the servants gives us a sense of what might be proper for us. The first two servants are examples of the response. They gladly and earnestly go about their business, producing an abundance of works of love and generosity and mercy. That is what the talent means. That is what the servants produced from the gifts that they were given. Like the woman of the first reading who symbolizes those who have absorbed the wisdom taught in Proverbs, they stretch out their hands to the poor and extend their arms to the needy, to the marginalized. They strive to love and please the Lord in all things, especially in their relations and dealings with other people. This response is a manifestation of a fear of the Lord that is praised throughout the scriptures. And such, the, as such fear is really awe and reverence before the God who is so graciously 
and mercifully recreating us. The awe and reverence that lead each of us to want to ask, how can I respond today in the concrete circumstances of my life to what God has given me for the gifts that I have received so generously? An improper response is also, we learn, ironically, fear. This is what we see in the third servant. Tragically, this fear is rooted in a false image of his master, whom he regards as harsh and demanding, waiting to exact punishment if he puts just one foot out of line. It is the exact opposite of the image of the first two servants. But notice something else. While the master acknowledges that he reaps where he does not sow, which points to his divine power, he does not accept the third servant's description of, description of him as demanding. Burdened with a false image of God, the, th the third servant turns in on himself. He, he buries his gifts, thereby hiding his light under a tub and becomes totally immobilized. So what might we be invited to consider? You know, there are many things today that can cause us anxiety and fear. The state of the world, finances, job security, sickness, maybe diminishment in old age, anxiety about our loved ones. Moreover, we are deluged daily by media and social media, international and local news stories that worry us. Our world seems to become less safe and more insecure with each passing day. Fear is palpable in us and around us. And yet we are invited to turn towards the Lord, to the one who knows each of us intimately and who, knowing us, generously gives us what we need, the one who wants to share life in abundance with us. In the face of such a loving God, we need not be consumed by fear as did that third servant. Rather, we can stand in reverence and awe, delighting in God's gifts to us. But not just delighting, that's only the beginning. We can do more. We can go and work agira contra against our fear because we know we are gifted and therefore we can use our gifts to respond with hope and energy. We are invited to allow ourselves to be consumed by that positive, healthy fear, the fear of the God who gifts. We are invited to bring God's love and goodness to others, to produce more talents, to move from constraining, limiting fear to becoming daily embodiments of the fear of the Lord. Can you sit with this invitation today and in the week ahead? Ask yourself, are you consumed by immobilizing fear? Or can you see the gifts that God has given you and seeing them, own them and allow yourself to be motivated to produce more talents by living with them? What is the sign of you embodying your gifts in your daily life? That's what the Lord asks of us. Take a look inside yourself and see how God has gifted you. Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week.